What is going on, everybody? It is me, your good old friend, and the king of the WTF moments, the Josh Ritchie, back for another WTF moments video. And this one is going to be all about UCW Game Over. A good show overall, but that's not why I'm here, and that's not why you all clicked on this video. It is to watch me talk as much shit about it as I can, because that's what I do best. <laughs> Let's get the crack of lacking. Just because the show is called Game Over does not mean the show, the intro, whatever the hell you want to call it, has to start with some crappy, blurry, 80s game graphics. UCW finally did it, they finally made it to the WWE, because if you saw during the opening pew 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 pyro fire, whatever the hell you want to call it, the Raw band was hanging over the top of the entranceway, because now UCW is now a part of Monday Night Raw, so here comes Roman Reigns, baby! <laughs> This is going to be truly magnificent to see how bad Eli Roblito can be put into the hospital. I want to see his bones break. And that's going to happen tonight. Why does Kurt Morrison have such a hard on for Dead Zone? During the entrance of Eli Roblito, whatever his name is, the other commentator, Michael Anthony or whoever, said something about David and Goliath's story, which is true. That's what this match was. But then Kurt Morrison came back saying... Ugh, boy, this is gonna get some heat. This gets some heat comments in my comment section, isn't it? He came back saying, "This is not a fairy tale. This is real life." So, in retrospect, Kurt Morrison was saying the story in the Bible was a fairy tale. Ooh, ooh, that is mad heat for him. In a statement by Kurt Morrison towards Eli making his entrance, "This is a PG show. He's wearing something that he agrees with." What kind of show is Brian the Brain running? Because apparently your commentator Kurt Morrison is doing cocaine behind the announce desk. Michael Anthony calls a tope suicide launching plancha. Apparently the commentator monkeys forgot that Alexander Henry was in the Fatal 4 because here is how they announced it. In this Fatal 4 match we got David Blake and Havoc versus Rashad Wyatt. Oh, and I was in there too, I guess. He's in there too, I guess. During Havoc's entrance, he just stood there like a complete stupid idiot for a good solid 20 seconds before he actually did any freaking thing. Come on, if you're making your entrance, do something. Like, do a backflip or something. Don't just stand there like an idiot. Do something. I know it's just a game, but I gotta point this out. If it's a Fatal 4-Way match, and if you're outside, don't do anything big on the outside. If you're in the ring, then do something big, because the audience is focusing on the action in the ring, not outside. The audience can't focus on everything all at the same time. Again, I know it's a game. It's kind of pointless what I'm doing, but I just thought I'd make that clear. Peter Morrison says, and I quote, I thought we were in Seattle, not in Western Europe. This is going to be a common theme throughout the night, isn't it? During the Fatal Four, there was a big old little glitch during the match. Which means you should just keep into the theme of the show. Good job, guys. Kurt Morrison states, What an entrance! During the first five seconds of NR Kuzant's entrance. Alright, guys, I know you're trying to make money on this and all, but you gotta stop with the plugs, guys, okay? You just need to stop with the plugs. While I'm on the topic, make sure you subscribe to EWE Wrestling to make sure you listen to the epic action. Michael Anthony states, we are devaluing our commentary. It's already devalued. Man, no, let me tell you, if Rip Rogers saw all those dives during that match, he'd be turning over in his grave. And he's not even dead yet. But let me some flippy shit, though. Hoo <laughs> little flippy shit. During the match, both of them kicked out, from, kicked out at one from multiple dives. Man, if Jim Cornette saw that, he'd be having a stroke right now. <laughs> I know it's wrestling, and, and that logical part of your brain is to be just thrown out of your head as far as it fucking can, but if Tristan Knight would have just signed his name on the contract before the match even happened, this whole match could have been avoided. Like if Malik won, which he did, spoiler alert, he would have, Malik went, I got the briefcase, and Tristan went, nah, 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 pal, look at the briefcase right there. I'm like, is that the contract? Yeah, that's the contract, look, look at the bottom there. That's your name, yeah, so which means my contract, hand it over, bitch, mine now, ha <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Yeah, I could have just done that so they could have been avoided. Kurt Morrison to the other commentator, Michael Anthony. I know more pro wrestling than you. <laughs> okay, let's just start over. We'll try it again. <clears throat> I know more pro wrestling. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I cannot say it. Can we just like, move on to the next thing? We'll just keep that in. Just move on to the next thing. 
Apparently, this match is not a ladder match. You know, I don't really follow YouTube that much, but they, they never said it was going to be a ladder match, and then all of a sudden they get out there. Boom, there's ladders. What happened there? Similar to when he stole the title, but well, what's Malik doing? Oh my god! Oh my god! You know, there are such things as good WTF moments on this video, and that dive by Malik onto the ladder and Trishner that match, I consider that a good WTF moment. One of the commentators, I, I, I lost track now. Moon Soul Side Slam! Spanish Fly. During the ladder match, Malik just waits for Trishner to get up. What, what is some, some sort of video game? Oh, oh, right. Sorry, just move on. New commentator, LC2K, states. I'm here to replace, I don't even remember his name. Shoot, I don't even remember either, man. I'm, I'm pretty much lost track of who's commenting what at this point. Lito Deck, he's got a 33.3% chance of retaining his title tonight and winning this match. You got a 33 and a third chance of winning. But I, I got a 66 and two thirds chance of winning because Kurt Angle knows he can't beat me and he's not even going to try. Why did Juan Santos break Zach Sanchez's pin on Lito Deck? It's an elimination match, right? You need, the whole point is to eliminate your opponent, allegedly. So, you could just like, go, leave, sit in the crowd, have a beer, get some popcorn, and watch the other two do all the work. One of them gets pinned, gets eliminated, and you swoop in, whoop, one, two, three, I win, yay! It's not a fall away slam, it is a flapjack, Michael, or Kurt, or whichever commentator you want. I don't remember anymore, just next one. Why is there a rope break and a triple threat? There are no rope breaks and a triple threat. Come on, people. Another good WTF moment. It is that whole triple threat match because it was fine. It was good wall to wall. Probably match of the night. And now because of that match, I am now a Zach Sanchez mark. So let's get this new thing going. Let's let us get Zach Sanchez for world ch world champion trending worldwide, baby. Let's get it trending. <laughs> you know that Zach Sanchez guy ain't half bad looking either. I'm taking out there a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's a good looking man, yeah. Wait, is that still running? That's still running. We can cut that out, right? Good. The world title doesn't main event their show, WTF. During the match, big time Jake gets on the apron and the ref doesn't do fuck all. He just stands there and it's like, oh, hey buddy, how's it going? He's probably like, get down from there. Come on, ref, do something, you're goddamn job. Damn refs. Apparently, while Colby Jordan is getting beat by two guys and a girl, oh no, 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 no! Mono decides to just stance down to the ring like he's high on Jose's weed instead of running down into, you know, like, help him from getting injured or whatever. Yeah, just stuff like that. How do you tell what's that video package? Huh? There are no rope breaks in this Hell in a Cell match, which is right, by the way, but there weren't any in the triple threat. Come on, consistency. If you're not gonna have them, if you're, if you're gonna have rope breaks today, you should have them here, but. I guess we've lost all rules in this show, just blech. Wait, no, you're too close to the edge. You're too close to the edge. What are you doing? Oh, oh my god! god! Sick ass spot off the top of the show. Congrats to both women for killing themselves. After a sick ass spot, we bring you long and boring and useless crowd shots. That unexpected cash in though. WTF, a good WTF. WTF on Jose and Jacob. Apparently, my exorcism on Elizabeth worked. Ha <laughs> ha You're welcome. Bit of a cop bow for a show finish, don't you think, people? You know, you think, like, the world title should have made it instead of that, but uh, I'm, I'm not the booker, apparently. He is. I don't really see a difference. And that's going to be it for all the WTF moments for UCW Game Over. Good overall show, but again, that's not why you clicked on this video. Anyways, thank you all for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at the Josh Ritchie or on Instagram at the Real Josh Ritchie. Make sure you subscribe to EWE Wrestling on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to this channel, Ultimate Wrestling Entertainment. Thank you all for watching. This might be the this might be a one and done thing on the WTF moment, so I or I could have more time on my hands than I could do it for Civil War. Who knows? But again, thank y'all for watching, and I'll see you another time.